guys, it's Michelle, or Mish Crafts. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am back at it again with another DIY plastic charm video since a lot of you guys really liked my last one. And in this video, I'm going to be making some charms for five of my close friends and um, I thought what better way to incorporate this in a video as like a wash me craft type of thing. So jumping right into the process, I went ahead and printed a few images of what charms I wanted to make so that I can, you know, trace them out afterwards because your girl is not going to freehand this. Anyways, moving on to making the actual charm. Of course, these are plastic charms, so I'm going to have to be using some shrink plastic today. And I got mine from a Daiso store, but you can also use some other recyclable plastic containers as long as it has a number 6 imprinted on it. Next, placing the image under the piece of plastic, I'm going to be using a black sharpie to mark out how big the image is so that I'll know where to cut. And as I'm doing this, I'm paper clipping the image to its piece of plastic because they each have different sizes and I don't want to mix them up. And don't throw away any pieces of plastic because they could be usable for other projects too. Now that everything is sized and fit to their image, I am now going to sand the surface down or file them down with some nail files and I did not use these on my nails, they are for crafting. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to be drawing on them and the only way that pencil or color pencils can show up on plastic is by filing its surface and roughening it up. I find this the most boring and messy part because as you can see, the plastic dust particles can literally get everywhere, so I recommend wearing a mask of some sort to block yourself from inhaling it. I didn't show myself doing this, but I went an extra step and rinsed them underwater so that I can get rid of any of the extra dust particles that might have still been adhered to the piece of plastic. Next, once again, I place the image under the piece of plastic and tape them down to secure the image from sliding anywhere and then using a pencil, I trace the image out. For this design specifically, I combined two images in one and it's kind of hard to explain but you can kind of guess what I did here. Now that everything is neatly drawn out in pencil, I grabbed my all-time favorite Prismacolor color pencils to color them all in. And I find that the more detailed and intricate the design gets, the more I have to sharpen the color pencils which can get really annoying sometimes if you're an artist that uses color pencils a lot. I also do apologize in advance if I sound kind of dead in this video and that is because I am sick and it's not a surprise. Since these last two are more detailed, I find that using a black color pencil or a brown color pencil to outline the finer details is more convenient. 
And let me tell you, these took so long to color because of constant lead breaking and sharpening. For this design in particular, you'll notice that I didn't fully color in the coke bottle and that is because when I bake it in the oven, it's going to be way too big so I decided to cut a portion off of it and it happened to be a part of his hand. So to whom I'm giving this to if you're watching this video, I am so so sorry you had to see that. Anyways, moving on, I'm going to be using a black sharpie to outline all of the other designs. After all the coloring process is done, I went ahead and used a hole puncher to turn them into some wearable charms. And then with my scissors, I cut off any excess plastic. And in my opinion, I personally like to leave a space in between because I just like the look of it that way. But you can also cut close to the image if you would like to. But I just find it a bit harder to maneuver around the um, edges, I guess. Now that they're all done and out of the way, it is time to bake the charms. So I prepared my pan lined with some aluminum foil and I baked each individual charm for at least a minute at 265 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. And I prefer baking them one at a time because you are more likely to keep an eye on that one charm if it does have a problem curling up in the oven versus having to keep an eye on both charms if you're gonna put two in the oven. And I just love watching the charm do its thing in the oven. It's like the most satisfying part, in my opinion. I don't know if you agree, but like this video if you do. You'll know when they're done when they try to flatten out in the oven, but in case they don't, with a help of a glass cup or any flat glass surface, I try to flatten them some more right when I take it out of the oven. And be careful when taking them out of the oven because it can be very, very hot and I almost burnt my finger one time, so yeah, just be careful. Okay, after all of the baking process is done with, um, now it is time to dome them or seal them with resin, so to do that, I grabbed a plastic board or any type of plastic board and I use some double-sided tape to tape the charms onto the board to keep it from sliding anywhere while I'm doming them with resin. Before jumping into the resin process, I used some Mod Podge to seal the surface first and I don't know, I researched about this and it helps to adhere the resin onto the charm. So that's what I did real quick and then after it has completely dried, I squeezed a good amount of UV resin on top of each charm and with the help of a toothpick, I used that to spread the resin around each edge. I'm fairly new to this whole resin thing, but I learned that using a um, torch of some sort, it'll help pop any air bubbles that rise to the surface. Please do this with caution as resin is pretty toxic. Since I am dealing with UV resin, I actually don't have a UV lamp on hand, so I took it outside where it is sunny and it also works the same. And you just want to leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it's fully cured. <laughs> this is what Asians be wearing. Here's what the charms look like after about 20 minutes of waiting. Um, it should be dried. Okay, maybe I'll wait a few more minutes because it's a little bit tacky, I would say, but not really, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's not ready yet, so 
I'm gonna wait for a few more minutes and then I'll come back. Okay, so they're definitely done by now. So I'm gonna bring them inside and um, <laughs> I'm sorry, we have so many Asian slides. <laughs> So you could leave the charms as it is, it looks completely fine, but um, I don't know, I felt really extra that day and I decided to dome the back of each charm. And to do that, I mixed some Pearl X pigments with some UV resin and keep in mind that a little pigment goes a long way. And you just want to repeat the same steps as doming the front of the charm except it's for the back of the charm. Okay, I just did the back. Now I'm going to bring it out in the sun to cure again. Now that the charm itself is completely done, it is time to attach them all together with some various keychain findings. And I did an extra step and used some beads to make little bead keychains. I don't know, keep on watching and see what I did. But of course, you can decorate your keychain however you would like to, but this is just how I did it. And if you do recreate this design, don't forget to tag me on Instagram and I'll be sure to like your post. If you haven't followed me already, shameless plug, it's at Mishcrafts. Link in the description box. By the time y'all are watching this video, I had already given these charms to my friends and they actually do know about my YouTube channel. So if you guys are watching this right now, um... Yeah, that's how I made your charms. Since I am giving these away to my friends, I, you know, wrapped them all up and made them all pretty as little Christmas gifts. And that is basically the end of this video. So just a little side note, I know I have been away for so long and I say that every time and I'm not gonna mention the excuse again because y'all already know the drill, but I'm pretty sure this is the last and final video of 2019. We're nearing 2020 and that is so crazy. The decade is about to end. Right now, this channel is standing at 79.5k subscribers, which is literally insane. And I'd like to thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys have shown in my last DIY plastic charm video. That video just blew up out of nowhere and I got really shook from all the views I've gotten from it. That is so crazy. It's been a while since I've actually popped off in a video. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing holiday. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys next year in my next video. Bye guys.